Dr. Vesaludes, or Dr. V as he's known to his patients, has practiced medicine for over 40 years. He's going to share his expertise on recognizing, treating, and combating melanoma and reducing the mortality rate of skin cancer in general. And thank you for having us, Dr. V. I have to thank you guys. You are giving me the opportunity to cement our legacy. So give us a little background on yourself. Yes. What made you want to get into dermatology, specifically focusing on melanoma? I studied genetics, molecular biology, pediatrics, newborns, and then I wanted an area where I can make a difference and I identified dermatology. More than 20 years ago, he encountered a patient who was completely overcome with melanoma. Wanting to understand why, he decided to devote his career to diagnosing and detecting the disease early. Explain really what melanoma is versus a mole or a freckle, freckle. or yeah. when does it become melanoma? Melanoma is when moles grow with no control and they spread. The unfortunate thing is that the moment we see signs clinically is usually too late. Knowing your family history is very important because once you see the clinical signs of melanoma, it is now hereditary. So the picture that you just brought up was full-fledged melanoma. That was right? a full-fledged melanoma that spread to okay. the whole body, the skin, and internal organs. And you showed the first picture, which was just one small dark spot, and then uh, as she's referencing the second one, it was everywhere. What was the time frame between those two? That, they are happen very, very quickly, within six months, really, wow. that spread quickly. That's where education and prevention come into the play. And from that, knowing your family history is very, very powerful. The ABCDs of melanoma is a method taught by dermatologists to help patients identify suspicious growths. A mole's asymmetry, borders, color, and diameter are all used to analyze the presence of melanoma. You had a couple of different turning points that led to sort of changing up the whole way things were done. Initially, when you learned dermatology, the, it was like the philosophy was the A, B, C, D, and E's, correct? Yes. And, but you saw some shortcomings in that. We find lesions that they are irregular, but they are totally normal. And we're finding lesions that have a completely regular border and symmetrical, and they're melanoma. That's why I recognized there was a disconnect between what I saw clinically and what I saw under the microscope. Dr. V has his own version of the ABCDs. I replace asymmetry with analysis of the whole patient. Okay. It's very important. I need to see the whole body, the whole context, the distribution of the lesions, and understand their family history. He replaces borders with razor blade biopsy, as that is the best way to ensure a mole is benign. And then I go to C, I accept the color, but it's not always a black color. It can be a brown or red or blue or shades of color. Diameter is replaced with distribution. After analyzing about 6,000 cases, mm -hmm. I believe the most prone area is the left shoulder, left upper arm, followed by the forearm, and then I go to the left thigh and left calf. Is that because of driving? <laughs> I don't think so, and no. that's a great okay. question. Dr. V believes that the left side of the body is much more disrupted embryologically than the right side, causing more asymmetry, mostly because the heart is on the left side. I study inflammatory skin disease, which they are not related to sun exposure. So they are inflammatory skin diseases, like alopecia areata, like vitiligo, and always I find more on the left than the right. Let's talk a little bit about um, how you first started to notice that the placement of moles could be inherited. In one of our family reunions, going back home to Cyprus, I noticed that my cousin and my son had exactly the same unique mole, same anatomic site, same color, same shape. Along the way, I realized that six other family members, they had exactly the same mole on the same hand. He then studied over 100 of his own patients who had melanoma in the same location, within a millimeter of their affected relatives. So obviously it's very important to know your family's history of melanoma, correct? Absolutely, uh, but not limited to melanoma because we know very well that the same genetic mutation can be seen in 20 different cancers. As we age, 
all of a sudden you get a freckle where you didn't have a freckle or a little spot pops out somewhere. And, you know, we keep hearing from GPs, oh, it's nothing to be worried about, it's normal. I will, I will never use that term, that's normal. You can say it's most likely normal, but let me tell you what else can be. And let, let me tell you why. Mike started seeing a dermatologist at a very young age after noticing some suspicious moles and freckles. And my mom actually, when I was younger, took me to a dermatologist and he basically said that I was predisposed probably to have some issues later on. So all through the years, I'd go and see dermatologists along, along the way. I was diagnosed with the first melanoma back in probably about 20 years ago. He began seeing Dr. V when he moved to Florida over 12 years ago. We've taken off probably 150 to 200 lesions, I would say. And early on, there was significant um, um, issues found with those moles. Of over 100 lesions removed from all over his body, 12 have been malignant melanomas. As we've gone through the years and have been going on a proactive basis three or four times a year, continue to take them off and take off the most suspicious ones. But now we generally don't have to go back and re-excise as many. By and large, it seems like we've gotten a better handle on it over the years. If melanoma is found in one of the dangerous areas of the body, such as the head, more extensive tests may be conducted. I had a, a melanoma on my nose following that, that procedure. We went and had some additional tests done, had MRIs completed, and uh, we found a, a tumor over my upper left chest area um, that was, uh, was benign, but it was removed, and, and all, all signs are clear with respect to that. This is a perfect example of how early detection can not only prevent melanomas, but can also catch other serious health issues. With my history, I had my daughters, I have three daughters, had them involved with being um, examined and checking out what's going on as well with Dr. Vasilutis. And, um, and certainly we've determined that there's been some issues with respect to commonalities between uh, myself and my daughters, location of, of lesions, of issues, and moles um, on the same side of the body. There's been some similarities that have really been astounding. He suggests that the whole family visit the doctor together, as many dermatological conditions are genetic. If I have a high-risk family where grandparents, parents, and siblings, they had history of melanoma, I will see that family every three to six months and any time they want to see me, any time that they perceive something is changing. Skin type is also a major risk factor, as someone with very dark skin will be at a lesser risk than someone with very light skin, red hair, freckles, and blue eyes. You don't think it really matters how much sun exposure they get? It matters, it matters, but not to the degree we think today. Okay. If you have bad genetics, and you have three or five genes prone to cause melanoma, melanoma is gonna come sooner or later. Mm. You it's, just have it's to recognize a matter of time, early. right? Okay. You have to recognize that early. Now, being intelligent with your lifestyle choices, avoiding sun exposure, using sunscreen, wearing protective clothing, it reduces that, and certainly reduces that in all the people who don't have the genetic predisposition. When a person develops melanoma in their 30s, it's typically due to genetics while others who are diagnosed with the disease later in life, age 60 and up, usually have lifestyle choices to blame. So this is a question that I thought of uh, that I don't know the answer to when I knew we were gonna be talking about melanoma. How does it actually kill? Melanoma spreads and goes internally, most likely to the lymph nodes, to the lungs, the brain, and the bones. And every cancer really kills by metastasizing the biologic activity of the cancer, the proliferation causes problems like bleeding, necrosis, space occupying lesions in the brain and seizures and hemorrhages, erosion of the arteries, of the veins, compression, all that stuff. Treatments include excising the lesion, removing the lymph nodes, radiation, immunotherapy, and chemotherapy. That's associated with a lot of misery, a lot of morbidity, a lot of complications, a lot of hospitalizations. It's not fun. For something really that you can cut it out if you catch it early. Right, so being proactive is certainly the best thing to do in this particular case. Thank you so much, and we're proud to be able to let you know that if you have a spot that kind of pops out out of nowhere, 